Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, Libya, Rome, Jews, proselytes, Cretans, and Arabians. The Spirit had come to describe the glory of God in their native tongues through those who followed Christ. These representatives of the world stood astounded but curious, bewildered but ready. Then Peter showed them from the scripture exactly what it meant, revealing God's promise to all who trust in Jesus. And many believed, and many repented, and many were baptized, and many were saved. The Spirit had come. The church was born. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at the Platte City United Methodist Church on this Pentecost Sunday where we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit and God's presence uh, with us. So thank you for being here on this, this Pentecost Sunday. You know, Jesus said that we would receive his spirit and his spirit would be with us. And his spirit, he called it one time, he called it, it would be your advocate. And that word advocate in the original Greek language is actually from a Roman military uh, formation where two soldiers would, uh, they would go kind of back to back with their swords, uh, I mean, excuse me, their shields in front of them. So the idea is that the Holy Spirit is our, our advocate, that uh, he's got your back, that the Spirit of Christ has got your back. And today you may feel like maybe you're under attack by things going on in your life. Or just things are going on and you're just struggling right now. But I just want to tell all of us that the Spirit of God has got your back. And the Spirit of God has called us here together today to worship our God together. So thank you for being here today. And I'm going to invite all of us that are here in person. If you would now fill out the attendance books you'll find located along those center aisles. Uh, sign your name and pass it on down the row so we have record of your attendance with us and we can further connect with you. Uh, and once it's uh, passed down to this side, if you'd pass it on back to the center aisle, we would appreciate that. If you're joining us online today, hello. We are so glad that you could join us for worship as well. And we want to know that you're here with us as well. So if you could just go to uh, our website, platcityumc forward slash connect and let us know that you are here and we would love to connect with you. And if you're a first-time guest with us today, thank you for coming to worship today. We encourage you to get your phone out right now if you're a first-time guest with us and just text WELCOME to that number you'll find on the screen and we can further connect with you uh, throughout the week as well. So if you're a guest with us today, we are so blessed to have you today. So thank you for being here. We encourage you to stop by the, the Welcome Center in the Fellowship Hall after the worship service. We have a gift for you as a way of just saying thank you for coming to worship and we pray God's blessing um, to be with you. And be sure we stay afterwards. For, all of us can stay afterwards and we have a time of, of food and fellowship. So I encourage us to, to do that uh, after the worship service. Well, just a, a couple of things I want to share with you in the life of the church. Some things going on and how you can further connect and serve. Uh, one is tonight, as long as it's not raining, we're all going to have a church-wide picnic down at the splash pad. You'll find information about that in your bulletin. The kids are going to have fun in the water starting at 6.15, uh, and we're going to just bring food, and we're just going to bring your own food, and we're just going to eat together and kind of fellowship, and that's tonight starting at 6.15 at the splash pad. You'll also notice in your bulletin uh, information about Vacation Bible School. VBS is going to be here before you know it. So there's information about uh, registering your kids and also uh, help, adult help that we need for Vacation Bible School. It's an important ministry we have of reaching our kids here and in our community. So I invite you to be a part of that and be praying for that. And one last thing is, I've always, I invite all of us to be looking around for those for rent signs or for sale signs that are around town. Let us know when you see them. Uh, let us know the address so that we can be in prayer for the new people who are going to be uh, moving into town. 
And so you can text me that address, or there's a book there on the Connect Center that you can write that information down. And we want to join you in worship, or worshiping. We want to join you in praying uh, for these new people who are moving in. All right. So, friends, today we also want to be in, in prayer for one another. And we have an opportunity to, to pray for each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. So if you have any joys that you want to share, or if you have any prayer concerns that you want to share with each other, I encourage you to, to text me at that number, and I'll be able to share those prayer concerns uh, a little bit later on uh, in the worship service. But I'm going to invite you now, as you are able, would you please stand as we're going to join together now in the call to worship. Let us join together now in the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit replace the tension with us with a holy relaxation. Replace the turbulence within us with a sacred calm. Replace the anxiety within us with a quiet confidence. Replace the fear within us with a stronger faith. Replace the bitterness within us with the sweetness of grace. Replace the darkness within us with a gentle light. Replace the coldness within us with a loving warmth. Replace the night within us with your light. Straighten our crookedness. Fill our emptiness. Dull the edge of our pride. Sharpen the edge of our humility. Come, Holy Spirit, light the fires of your love in us. Amen. Come thou, almighty King, number 61. We'll do all four verses there.
Well, we are glad that our kids are here with us this morning. Thank you for being here, kids. I hope you know that God loves you, and we love you, too. And uh, I have a couple of jokes for you, if you want to hear them. <laughs> I thought. Uh, actually, this one, I, I had Elizabeth in mind when I, when I came up with this first joke. Um, so here we go. Uh, why is England the wettest country? Because so many kings and queens have been reigning there. <laughs> right, well, here's one for you kids. I know you started summer school uh, this past week. And so this is for all of our Platte County pirates. Uh, so why couldn't the kids see the pirate movie? Anyone know? It was rated R. <laughs> Okay, that note, kids, glad that you're here. Have a great time. We have some great, safe, gathering, certified adults who are going to show you God's love and teach you stories that are in the Bible. Bye, guys. prayer together, I'm just going to invite us to just kind of put our, the, the palm of our hands up like this on our lap, just kind of, just like this, just in a, in a posture of receiving. So will you pray with me? And as we pray today, let's invite you to think about what you'd like to ask for from God's Holy Spirit. What would you like to ask, what would you like to ask for from God's Holy Spirit this morning? In this moment of silence, just have that conversation with God. Lord, in the words of that song, we just say, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God. Fall afresh on us. Melt us. Mold us. Fill us. Use us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. And Lord, right now, we just open our hands and our hearts and our lives to your presence, your spirit. And we accept your love and grace. And we just lay open before you now our lives, our joys and our hopes and our dreams. And we give you thanks for the gift of life, the joys of living. And we lay before you our disappointments, our hurts, our sadness. And Lord God, today we seek your healing. Seek your healing for ourselves and for this world that you so love that you sent your son, Jesus. And Lord, you said that, that we will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. So Lord God, help us to rely on your spirit, your power, to keep our eyes ever on you, to follow you more closely, to serve you more joyfully, and to love you more passionately. So come, Holy Spirit, come to us, kindle in us the fire of your love. And now, Lord God, we just pray for those we love and those who are heavy on our heart today. We especially want to pray for Jo as she deals with health issues, for Laura Knox's dad, Don, and for all those who are experiencing some kind of broken relationship. Lord, may your healing, loving presence be felt in their lives. And Lord God, right now we want to pray for all of our neighbors. And we pray for our new neighbors who will be moving in. Help us to be instruments of your love and your welcome and your presence to them. So Lord God, we just pray all of these things in the wonderful, loving name of Jesus the Christ. As we now join together as your beloved people, 
And we pray that prayer that the Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's continue to give God thanks now for the giving of our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings. I invite our ushers to come forward. city and around the world. And these things we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 I invite you to remain standing in honor of our scripture reading. Um, all our readings are taken this morning from the Gospel of St. Matthew. First from chapter 4, Jesus began to announce, change your hearts and live. Here comes the kingdom of heaven. And from chapter 6, Therefore, don't worry and say, what are we going to eat, or what are we going to drink, or what are we going to wear? Gentiles long for all these things. Your Heavenly Father knows that you need them. Instead, desire first and foremost God's kingdom and God's righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. And from chapter 22, he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. As you're being seated, if you would take your bulletin out, flip it on over to the back, you'll notice there is a section there where you can write down some notes as we go along today if you'd like to do that. But I encourage you just to be open to God's Holy Spirit 
and God is speaking to you uh, today. So let me ask you a question. What do you do when you face a bad situation? Now, depending on the day, different days, maybe different ways, but, but check out this guy up here on the screen. Uh, he's going bald, so what does he do? Well, of course, he gets a tattoo, naturally, right? And uh, you, you like that? Uh, you know, he, he laughs it off, and some people are just able to just kind of laugh it off, right? No big deal. Although there's some people who just kind of try to, to ignore what's going on, kind of like this, this lady up here. Like, nothing to see here. <laughs> okay, uh, that, that's one way. Uh, or, or sometimes we might just kind of feel like this cat up here. <laughs> you know what? Life, I mean, think about it. Life is hard for a whole lot of people. And let's just be honest, sometimes the world stinks. We hear and see so much going on in this world that it just absolutely stinks. It stinks. And, and we may react in, in, in different ways. We may respond in different ways to these things. But, but when we're in the midst of these kinds of things, I think sometimes it can be really hard to hold on to hope. Really hard. So what I want us to do this morning is I want you just to, to listen to these words from the scriptures. Uh, this is a, a verse that we looked at a couple of weeks ago, but I just want you to listen to these words. Let them just wash over you and fill you. This is Romans 15, verse 13. And it says, may the God, the God who can make impossible things happen, the God who is never, oh my gosh, what do I do now? of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. In other words, I don't know how this is all going to work out. This is kind of scary. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. But I'm going to trust in God. And as you trust in God, God fills you with his joy and peace. Why? So that you can overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So that God's Spirit can begin to work within you. God, God begins to ignite hope in you. The, the, the sparks begin to fly. And before you know it, the, the, all these different people and places catch on to that hope. You see, we're not supposed to just have hope. We are meant to to share hope. So let, let's uh, review a little bit here, and let's talk about a, a, a potential definition that we have of, of hope. Uh, this would be the, the verb form of, of hope. It, it's choosing to believe and act as if the future will be better than the present. And I might want to add, and working to make that so. So that, that, that's hope as a verb. And what would be maybe the, the opposite of hope? Maybe that would be despair. So let's see uh, the, the definition of despair. As a verb, it'd be choosing to believe and act as if the future will be as bad, if not worse, than the present. Yeah. Now, which will you choose? Which will you choose to believe? Which will you choose? You know, we have been looking at what the Bible tells us um, about hope. And last week, we looked at the Apostle Paul and, and how he was able to hold on, with a, a strong, hold on to a strong sense of hope in the midst of some really bad adversity. And then the week before that, we looked at the Psalms. And the Psalms gave us our memory verse. And let's put our memory verse up here. If you haven't memorized it yet, I encourage you to write it down and just say it to yourself over and over again. So let's say it together. I put all my hope in the Lord. I put all my hope in the Lord. In, in other words, when I put all my hope in, in a person or a place or a situation or a certain outcome, it's going to let me down time and time again. No, I need something bigger, something stronger, something that can't be taken away from me. 
And that kind of hope has a name, and it's Jesus. And today I want to look at, at Jesus and where we can find some hope in the Gospels. Now, the, the Gospels are the four, first four books in the New Testament. And if you know the names of the first four books of the New Testament, would you say them with me? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. In there, we find the stories of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. All right? And any guesses? How many times do you think hope is referenced in the Gospels? Just guess. Any guesses? 33. 38. 38. 76. Well, in the King James Version, it was a total number of, drum, drum roll, please. One. Isn't that crazy? And I started looking into it. I'm like, really? That's nuts, right? You would think there'd be a lot more. But I started thinking about it. And, you know, Jesus embodies hope. And the, the Gospel of John says that Jesus is the word of God made flesh. And one of the words that Jesus embodies, besides love, is hope. I mean, it, it's, it's hope. Jesus embodies it. Jesus shares it. Jesus pursues people who need it. You see, in the Bible, and in particular the Psalms, uh, there's been Bible scholars who have pointed this out to us, that, that, that especially in the Psalms, people tended to go through three phases in their life over and over again. And the first phase they call order. And that's when things are going great in your life. And we have Psalms in our Bible where they're just praising God for these times. But then there's always something that happens. Something bad happens, their life falls apart. So there, there is disorder, is what they call it. And, and there's psalms in our Bibles where people are just crying out to God in pain and asking God for help. But the good news is that phase in life doesn't last forever. Because eventually there is a reorder. And so there's psalms in the Bible all about praising God, thanking God for, for saving them, for rescuing them. And, and so we have order, disorder, and reorder. This is a cycle that we all go through all the time. And part of our hope comes from knowing that no matter how bad things are, it's not going to stay that way forever. That there is going to be a reordering. Now, when Jesus comes onto the scene, Jesus spends most of his time with people who are in the, the disorder phase of their life. <coughs> so their, their life has kind of fallen apart. And, and many of these people are in the disorder phase because of life choices, because of decisions that they have made. It's kind of their fault. And Jesus spent a lot of time with those people in that disorder because of how, what they decided to do. But Jesus, I mean, he's, he's pretty clear on what an ordered life is meant to look like. I mean, Jesus says in our scripture today that, that it looks like this. This is like the foundation of your life is to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. This is your foundation, which your life is meant to be built upon. Everything in your life is meant to, to flow from this one foundation. All your hopes, dreams, passions, everything flows from this. Your number one goal is to know and love and serve God. This is the foundation of everything. And then he says, and then you love your neighbor. In other words, you work for the good of your neighbor, whether they deserve it or not. You know, I like what Billy Graham once said. He says, it's the Holy Spirit's job to convict it's God's job to judge, and it's my job to love. Loving our neighbors without a but, a but, but this, but that is really important, says Jesus. So we put this on top, and then here, this represents you, right? It's love your neighbor as yourself. It's really important that you love yourself. That you care for yourself. That's really important. And it's key. And it goes on top. And Jesus says, this is what, this is what an ordered life is meant to look like. This is how life's meant to work. But when we kind of put 
ourselves first and what we want and our hopes and dreams come first, then we think that everything else has to, to fit around us, has everything else has to fit around our schedule and what we want. And you know, when we, we do things like that, even God has to fit in our schedule and our priorities get kind of messed up. And when we do things like that, it messes things up. But one of the things I love about Jesus is that he had a heart for people whose lives were just like this. He had a heart for people just like that. And he went around, in this one particular uh, sermon we have in our scripture today, he went around saying these words. And let's just put it on the, the screen here. It says, Jesus began to announce, let's say it together, change your hearts and lives. Here comes the kingdom of heaven. Now, I don't think well, I don't hear condemnation in here. I think Jesus was going around with joy, and he's talking to people who had messed up their life, and their life was looking like this, and they felt like they were, because they messed it up, that they were no longer going to be welcome, they were no longer going to be accepted, that they weren't good enough. And Jesus goes along to those people, and he says, I've got some good news for you. The kingdom of God is here, and it's for you. It's for you. See, Jesus pursued people whose lives were disordered and falling apart because of the choices they had made. And he, he met them in their disorder in order to bring reorder back into their life. That's why in the Gospels we find, we find mention of forgiveness some 60 times. You know, Jesus embodied this message, and, and I hope it's a message that you all hear this morning, that God knows every creepy, cruddy thing that you will ever do, and he still loves you. He still loves you. He knows everything. That's why he, I mean, Jesus embodied that message. He, that God loves you. God accepts you. God wants you. And if that is true of you, it's true of every single person on this planet. No ifs, ands, or buts. That's why Jesus told story after story about prodigal children, about sinners being welcomed and accepted. Jesus has come to me. All you have been hurt by life, who have been, who are wounded, who are just tired and stressed out, come to me and you will find a better life. Your, your past doesn't have to dictate your future anymore. There can be healing. There can be forgiveness. There can be a second chance. Jesus says, I love you. I want you. So fear not. Fear not. Your future is in my hands. Now, some of the people that Jesus was ministering to. Their life was like this. Their life was like this because it wasn't any of their fault. I mean, some of them were dealing with, with fear and anxiety over just the stuff that was going on around them. And others had, had all kinds of brokenness, Bro broken physically, <clears throat> broken emotionally, all kinds of brokenness that they were dealing with. Not, no fault of their own. And so we find all kinds of stories in the Gospels of Jesus reaching out to these people, bringing healing, bringing compassion, bringing order out of, of disorder. And, and in, a time, in a time where there were Roman soldiers marching around, there, there, there were people who were struggling just to feed their family. Jesus actually had the audacity to say these words. Let's just read it together. Therefore, don't worry and say, what are you going to eat? Or what are you going to drink? Or what are you going to wear? Gentiles long for all these things. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Instead, desire first and foremost God's kingdom and God's righteousness. And all of these things will be given to you as well. Seriously? I mean, really? Like, don't worry, be happy. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. I mean, is that, is that how it works? I mean, you say that to someone who's dealing with, with chronic anxiety, and that's not very helpful. Because they may need therapy and medication along with me. But I think what Jesus is getting at here, I think what Jesus is saying is if you want that ordered life, you've got to put your trust in God. 
Trust that God is with you. Trust that God cares about you and that God will take care of you. But how does God take care of us? I mean, does food just like magically fall from heaven? No. no. God uses... <coughs> That's why the end of Jesus' ministry, he says, I want you to continue doing what I'm doing. You see me caring for people? Then I want you to, to continue that on. Uh, in other words, I want you to be my hands and feet and voice in this world. You see, God brings food and help and hope through us. In other words, you and I, we are all supposed to be a bunch of hope bringers. Let's put that on the screen. Hope bringers. Everyone on the count of three are going to say, I am a hope bringer. Can we say that? Count of three. One, two, three, go. I am a hope bringer. Now turn to your neighbor and say, you, you are a hope bringer. You are a hope bringer. You're a hope bringer. And guess what? This shouldn't come as a surprise, kind of a duh, but let's put this on the screen. We'll put this on the screen. Say it with me now. Hope bringers must be filled with hope themselves. Hello, right? You can't share what you don't have. That's why we envision at this church that we are igniting hope within small groups. Because, friends, small groups is where we get to know each other. And we can care for each other and support each other and love each other and help spur on each other's faith. And we're going to be talking a lot more about that in the future. But, you know, Jesus started a small group. He called 12 disciples. And they did life together. And, and together they were able to ignite hope within their group. And it was a hope that they were able to share. And that's what I hope could happen here at this church. Well, another thing I see is, let's put this on the screen. Let's say it together. Hope bringers bless people who need hope. That's why we are envisioning our church being a place where we're going out and we're blessing and we're supporting uh, the schools and teachers. Because God knows they need it now more than ever. Mm -hmm. So starting this fall, we're going to be talking more about this too, but starting the fall, we're going to see especially our neighbor right over here. We're going to see how we can partner with Compass Elementary School so we can bless them and serve them and support them as they need. We're going to get to know those kids. We're going to, there's going to be opportunities this fall to, or do lunch buddies and show those kids that we care and, and that they're supported and that they matter. Friends, that can make a world of difference to those kids. You see, what Jesus did, he looked for people in situations that needed hope, and he pursued them in order to bless them, and it made a world of difference. And we can do that, too. Well, another thing I see, let's put it on the screen, is hope bringers, oh, let's say it together, sorry. Let's say it together. Hope bringers pray for people who need hope. Last week. Symbolically, we laid before the throne of God three names of people in our lives that need hope. And I encourage all of us just to begin to pray for those three names daily. If you haven't done that yet, I encourage you right now to think of three people in your life who you think need some hope. And just begin to pray for them. We have the, in our golden bowl up here, we have the names that you folks put in there last week. So think about the people that you can start praying for. And you can just be simple as, Lord, please give them hope today. But let me just tell you, I'll give a little word of warning. If you start praying for these people, God just might use you to answer your own prayer. <laughs> just say. And folks, don't give up on people. Don't give up on praying for people. Nancy McBride tells me that there was a young man uh, that she was praying for who was going through some really tough times in his life. And she was praying for him daily. And he ended up getting into drugs and then going through a, a divorce. I mean, talk about disorder. This guy was going through it. But she said, sometimes I felt like my prayers weren't being answered at all. And I, sometimes I felt like I was just saying the words and they had no meaning. But she said, I prayed for this, this gentleman every day, get this, for 23 years. And no change. But she said, guess what? I went back home to Kansas, she said, last weekend. 
And I ran into this guy that I've been praying for daily for 23 years. And guess what? He is now happily remarried. He has given his life to Christ. And he and his wife are involved in their church, involved in leadership in their church. And he and his wife were so happy. Talk about a reordering of a life. And, and Nancy says, well, Nancy, I tell you what, she said, neighbor looks so happy, but I never seen Nancy look so happy. I mean, she looked like she had a permagrant on all week long. She's so happy. And she tells me, Nancy says, so don't you dare ever give up on anyone. Don't you dare ever give up praying for people. And if Nancy tells me to do it, I better do it. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, Jesus had a deep prayer life. And he prayed for people who needed hope. And we can do that too. Because who knows how God will use our, uh, to answer our prayers. Maybe in years from now. All right, so one other thing. Let's put it on the screen. Let's say it together. Hope bringers invite people who need hope. Jesus was always inviting people into conversation, into relationship, into a deeper walk with God. One person in our congregation tells me that, that when we were encouraged to get the Bless Every Home app, that they began to, to pray for their neighbors by name. And they began to pray for opportunities to talk to their neighbor. And, and guess what? It happened. They were able to talk to their neighbor. And eventually, they were able to invite their neighbor to this church. And guess what happened? They came to church! <laughs> right? Oh my gosh, I can't explain it. I don't fully understand it, but I think when we pray, when we pray for our neighborhoods, when we pray um, for our neighbors, some kind of spiritual power is unleashed and things start happening and we get to participate in what God is doing in the world and we become a bunch of hope bringers. Amen. I mean, how cool is that? You know, Delinda Ryan tells me that after our blessed message series, we were encouraged to eat with people, invite people over for dinner. And she tells me that a couple weeks ago, her and Russ did exactly that. They invited their neighbors over for dinner. Everyone brought some food. And she said, we had so much fun. I think we have a picture of them up here. She said, we got to talk to neighbors we'd never even talked to before. We got connections and learned all kinds of things about each other. And said, how cool is that? I mean, Jesus invited people to be with him, to have conversation. He listened to people. And he invited them into a deeper relationship. And so can we. So I don't know, maybe this summer you can invite some of your neighbors over for a cookout. Invite them over for ice cream. Invite them over to watch fireworks. I don't know, take your neighbor out to coffee. I don't know. But I do know the hope bringers invite. They invite. And hope bringers, that's who we are called to be. So friends, is our future going to be better than the present? Can we be people of hope? I think we choose. We get to choose. And when we choose to put our trust in Jesus, who came for people whose lives were disordered in order to bring reorder into their lives, when we put our trust in Jesus, we are choosing hope. And that's the kind of hope we're meant to share. Let's pray. Lord, help us as your church to put our trust in you. Thank you for coming into the mess of this world, the mess of our lives, in order to bring hope and healing. Thank you, God, for not giving up on us or anybody. And whatever phase of life we're in, may we be assured of your love and saving presence and that there is always hope. Spirit of the living God, Renew us as your church. Help us not to despair, not to grow weary, but fill us with your spirit so that we can be your church, so that we can be hope bringers who are filled with hope ourselves, hope bringers who bless people who need hope, hope bringers who pray for people who need hope, hope bringers who invite people who need hope. All these things we pray in the name of your son, Jesus, and the power of your Holy Spirit. And all God's people said. 
as we prepare to, to celebrate Holy Communion together, I invite us to join now in singing our communion song. This is number 347 in our hymnal. Shall you stand and sing with me, please? We'll do both verses there. Yeah. you think about God's love and know that you are a beloved child of God, I invite you in this moment of silence just to confess your sins to God, knowing that he loves you and that he forgives you. So let's go to God now in the time of silent prayer. Amen. Now, as God's dearly loved and forgiven people, we remember on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for how he took the bread, he, he blessed it and broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the supper, he took the cup and he blessed it. He said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so will you pray with me? Lord, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would be poured out upon all of us gathered here this day and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we might be for this world your body redeemed by your blood. Lord, make us one with you, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we all feast at his heavenly banquet. These things we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said. Amen. You're going to be invited by the ushers to, to come forward in a few moments. But I do want to remind you that this is not a United Methodist table. This is the Lord's table. 
And every single person is welcome here no matter who you are. Because we are all in need of God's love and grace. And that's what we have here. So when you come forward, I just encourage you just to see this as your opportunity to dedicate or to rededicate your life to loving and serving Jesus. When you come forward, you can just whisper, Lord, I'm yours. I'm yours. And when you receive the juice, you'll, you'll get it, and you can peel it back, and you'll get the, the bread, and you'll peel it back a second time, you'll get the juice, and just invite you to receive what Jesus has to offer you, which is himself, his love, his forgiveness, his peace and joy. So I'm going to invite you to come forward now. The table is set. Let us feast with the risen Savior. And you can kneel at the altar as you take the communion or go back to your seats, however you feel the Spirit leading you today. you pray with me? Lord Jesus, thank you for giving us the spiritual nourishment here at your table, that we may have the strength to go out in the power of your spirit 
to be hope bringers. In these things we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to invite you now, as you're able, would you please stand for our closing song. Amen. 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 <laughs>